Hello, oh, welcome back. In this episode, I will go through a few weapons and my favourite stats. I have seen a lot of people ask which weapon is best. Honestly, it would depend on your playstyle. These are just my personal choices and some clips showing off the gameplay. First up is the Great Sword. For my Great Sword, I choose Guild Staff. It allows you to have two arts and has the original combo set. So, the question is, what does each weapon offer? Now the Great Sword is slow, but has a high attack and can block. It's usually a good all round weapon with different combos, as well as a charge attack. The attacks for the charges have three stages. The third being the most powerful. The Ground Slash, as the Hunter Art, for example, allows you to go up to the enemy and does large damage. For me, the Great Sword has been a classic. Albeit slow, it has good maneuverability. Evasion is possible, but also so is blocking. The closer you get, the better. There is also a back charge. This allows you to do a combo, including both the charge attacks. The Great Sword usually has a lower elemental, but higher attack. The Great Sword also offers a nice set for games. Having a good range, fighting style, and all in all, a good combo, I would recommend it for people who struggle fighting some of the bigger monsters, such as you can lost or a canto. Uh, you could also use the aerial hunter art, hunter style. However, it's not my favourite. Some of the weapons can have some nice aesthetic, such as the executioner axe or the ravager blade. The skills I would recommend something that makes up for its lack of speed. So, sheath control, combined with speed sharpening and a boosting attack, would make this weapon very powerful. Sometimes, all it takes is a few seconds difference between success and failure. Take time if you need it though. Sometimes, blunt attacks are better than mindless rushing. Okay, moving on to the hammer. Now, the hammer is known to be one of the slowest weapons available in the game. However, it is the best for using the stun lock. The hammer has medium maneuverability and can allow hunters to break some parts of the monsters, such as a shell with the damn your hammer top. For the hammer, I prefer to use aerial, because who doesn't like the idea of jumping up to boob a monster? The hammer loses its ability to pull up as a better evasion than that of a greatsword. The hammer, like the greatsword, has the ability to charge up attacks. It has two attacks, spinning charge or the uppercut charge. The hammer, I would recommend having a negative affinity. It allows for more staggers and stuns, or at the loss of speed and damage. Hammers can usually come in some very interesting styles, such as the Fist of Fury or the Arlug. Personally for skills, I would recommend something that boosts its attack power and the ability to stun a monster. That, combined with earplugs or tremor resist, will allow you to stun most monsters and beat them into submission. However, it's not always recommended as its slow speed can make Fighting some monsters annoying. Never impossible. But they can use electric body attack, or simply the drones, so Velocidrome, Niodrome, Sheer Size, or Lack of, make this weapon a bit cumbersome in those battles. But then, that is where my next weapon comes into play.
The next weapon was originally introduced in Monster Hunter Freedom 2 slash 2 Unite, alongside the beloved Tigrex. It's a longsword. Well, what can I say? It's a weapon with the second longest reach, decent attack power, and who doesn't like running around like a samurai? The longsword has a decent affinity pull and a decent elemental pull. Somewhat lacking, however, in the status effects. Its main benefit is a sheer reach, being one of the few weapons being able to easily reach a monster which is above you. For example, Glacioth. For the hunter style, I would use Adept. With the hunter art, Sakura Slash. This allows for the best combo use and can prove to have some very powerful counters. However, it does prevent you using the spirit gauge as often. But that is where Sakura Slash comes into play. Because timed correctly, Sakura Slash boosts your spirit gauge by a level and unlocks the special evade attack, which also allows you to boost a level, as long as you can pull it off. Monsters such as Plesioth and Lavasioth become fish food when using the longsword due to its range and speed. As for the hunter skills, I would use shield control because being able to quite quickly uh, sheath and unsheath allows you to be able to charge in pull off a quick attack and run off again. For its the aesthetics, you have the Mizutsun weapon, or my personal favourites, the Dark Blade or Eagle Cleaver. My next weapon also happens to be my favourite, so I will explain that now. My favourite weapon, if you watch my other videos, is the Sword and Shield. It has the highest elemental damage of all the weapons, the shortest range, but also one of the easiest to manoeuvre, the quickest block, and who doesn't love the epicness of the special dragon blade you get from the rush shard. That weapon was, a, was the one I used to first beat Lao Xian on the PSP, admittedly with 10 seconds left. Usually, for the Sword and Shield, I would use Adept. Mainly because a quick evade combined with jumping up and hitting it on the way down can knock most monsters off balance. I would perhaps also use Aerial for the same reason. Again, for Example, I would use Plesia. Using Ariel for that one, I can hop up and slap it. Serves it right. The short range of the weapon, however, makes you more likely to be hit by the feet or even a tail swinger too. In most of my videos, I will be using this weapon, because why not? Unless requested to show the weapons, I played long enough to know them all. As for skills, I would always go for speed sharpening and innovate skill or two. You could also do with an elemental boost or an affinity boost. For example, the Hero Blade has a base affinity of plus 30%, or when fully upgraded, 50%. Combine that with critical eye plus 2, which gives a plus 20 affinity, plus an affinity oil of which adds plus 30. That allows for, yes, that's right, every attack to be critical and every attack to do double damage. We get the most powerful raw damaging weapon in the game with the potential to be quick. Now, I cannot possibly cover all the weapons in one video. I mean, I can, I won't. I will, however, cover this last one, so it is one of the only weapons I would use Valor for. The 
last weapon I'm covering is a charge blade. Now, it's basically a sword and shield. A lot of its attacks are the same. It does have the shield attack you can do and it allows you to use the charge files. They come in elemental, status, or exhaust. Its larger blade allows for a better reach and its bigger shield allows for a better block. So, what's the downside? It's slow. It's much slower than the sword and shield, but it does have a charge attack. It has one of the largest combo ranges, allowing for perhaps more versatility. So why would I use Valor for this? Well, because as you sheath your weapon, you can charge your blade. You can charge your shield from them. So, combined with Valor, you get two boosts in one. Plus, that allows it to make up for lack of speed. For the style, personally I like the Mandible Blade, the Rathalos one, and the Rathian. Simply because I like the Rathian's poison attack. The Mandible Blade looks epic. And the Rathalos Blade, it just giant bar of fire. For the Hunter skills, a guard plus two, quick sheath, and speed sharpening. That is my recommended, but not the most important. Hopefully, in the next video, I will cover the ranged weapons and dual blade. After, I'll cover the lance, gun lance, switch axe, hunting horn, and insect glaive. I know this video is short, so I'll just fill the rest with useless knowledge about the monsters, the mechanics, the not as well known, and some facts about the franchise. Originally introduced in the original game, you have the different senses. So a monster can see, a monster can hear, you can see, you can hear. The monster can also smell. If you place raw meat in an area, out of sight of the monster, it will walk towards it. Meaning you can bait a trap, round the corner, hide, and the monster will go and eat the meat. You can paralyze the meat, and the monster will get paralyzed. Alongside that, the monsters listen. If you make a lot of noise, bombs, for example, the monster is more likely to target you. This is a mechanic that can be useful to prevent your healer, your hunting horn, your crossbows, to be attacked. It can also work the opposite. Another mechanic that a lot of people don't necessarily use is the sleep bombing. A lot of people don't use it online because you've got a lot planning. You have to have someone with a sleep weapon some bombs, and the ability to know when a monster is going to go asleep. Again, it's a mechanic that's been around for a while. And it was rumoured to have been able to kill most monsters just straight away. It could trust me, I tried many times. Uh, interesting information about the franchise is in Rise you have Wyvern riding. However, that was supposed to be introduced in Monster Hunter for you. 
that alongside the 3D, 3D environment was supposed to be the big selling plan. However, due to limitation, you got mounting instead. And the wyvern riding was ported to Monster Hunter Stories. That is why they were brought out at the same time. The mechanics were supposed to be combined. However, the mounting took off and people liked it. So, riding wyverns was put off to later games. In Freedom 2 and Freedom 2 Unite, you were introduced to your Palico. You couldn't choose freely its weapons and armour. It had three presets. Acorn, Samurai, and the Mafo Mufu, however you pronounce it. So. In the original game, you also had the Boogie. It was rumoured that if you petted it and it loved you, you would get a luck boost in your battle. Mainly for the quest rewards and better money. You didn't. The boogie is just there to make you feel good. And who doesn't like seeing watermelon poogie or angel poogie? That's all the interesting facts I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed. Plenty more upon request.